Hello and welcome to today's LOL Sports Roundup. We're going to cover one team uh, making a move. Uh, and then the LCS games from last night, the LPL and LCK games from this morning, then preview LPL and LCK games for tomorrow. Um, the one move made was T1, Bangy resigned. Uh, coach of the squad since Worlds last year. He went 23-4 and in the LCK regular season. He's replaced by Tom. Tom was an assistant on the current staff. He is 37 and 9 um, in um, four major regions as an assistant coach. He not only was an assistant on T1 uh, with the staff, but also with Gen G uh, a couple years ago. He's a former player, played for uh, T1 back when they were known as SKT in 2015, played a little bit in the LPL. Also was a coach on PSG Talon, an assistant. So um, he has been around on some decent teams. We'll see what happens. Today was a rough start, but I don't expect much different. Predictions, I'm 179 and 79 on the year. I did miss the LCS predictions for uh, last night, so that is unfortunate. The first time I've missed predictions since I started doing predictions. Um, so we'll, we'll go through uh, all of this and then preview tomorrow's games. In the LCS, Dignitas and FlyQuest dig win. They're 6-6. Six and six. FlyQuest are 3-9. and nine. So after going 3-0 and oh for a weekend, they are 0-3 oh once more. Jensen was MVP with a pentakill on Jace, going 10-1-3, 34% of damage. Santorin, 2-2-10 in the jungle. Prince, 3-1-7, 39% of damage for Fly. This was one of those games where Prince actually showed up, tried to fight back. Um, and just couldn't overcome how poorly Vikla was playing. Um, Impact struggled into Rich. Rich playing Rumble. Uh, this was just a very one-sided affair. Once again, I mean, outside of a, a little glimpse out of Spica and Prince, there was not much going on. Um, for, from the solo laners especially. Um, you know, I don't really understand how Jensen got his Penta. I am, I, w I probably should re-watch it. Um, I do wonder if Spica, like, into it or something um, because Jensen was nowhere near Spica when he had a Quadra so I don't know how he got the Penta necessarily I don't like Penta's handed over I think that that is not a uh, cool thing to do but nevertheless Jensen was very good in that final team fight because okay was it how one-sided was it Dig always had a little bit of an advantage and then they uh, were able to take it to because honestly Rich on Rumble is a much better position than Impact in top lane, and the way Gory, uh, not Gory, um, Jensen was playing. I mean, FlyQuest, it was, it was lost before that final team fight, but Jensen really sealed the deal. NRG and EG, NRG win. They're five and seven. EG 18th in the power rank. He's nine and three. FBI also had a Penta, so two Pentas in one day. Nine to 11, 27 percent of damage on Jinx. Palfox 908 on LeBlanc, Unforgiven 025, 39 percent of damage in the loss for EG. Um, Contract set the pace going top lane, getting Dokla ahead of Revenge. They did that multiple times. Palafox ended up cleaning up after FBI went off with his Penta. It was in the mid game, not a late game Penta. So it actually boosted NRG into a lead that they no longer had to, um, you know, worry about losing necessarily. Uh, it's actually one of the few Pentas I would say um, the player earned MVP not for having a Penta. But just how well they played. FBI was the difference maker by having that pentakill. Um, that ch ch it changed the uh, uh, game. Um, Jojo Pune wasn't able to keep up with Palafox. Armeo a little out of place um, after a couple good Ivern games. Um, you know, FBI showing up against his former team that let him go after last split. Um, yeah, it just, just kind of just happens, right? Team Liquid, 100 Thieves. Team Liquid win. They're 7 and 5. 20th in the power rank is 100 Thieves, 5 and 7. Core JJ was MVP on Thresh. Summit, 7 3 6. 32% of damage on Rumble. APA, 3 0 11 on Zig. So between his two first games in his career, he's 11 0 and 14. Double lift, 3 4 1. 32% of damage in the loss. Core was MVP. They got a 2v2 kill in the early game. Core with a wild placed hook. Core would then get a couple other well-placed hooks going in roaming mid lane. And then a key early to mid-game team fights that allowed Team Liquid to get ahead. And then the carries took over from their summit. Even took a trip mid lane in the early game as well to help APA. Very weird 
composition when you have rumble and zigs both in uh, the solo lanes. It's a pretty lopsided, um, you know, damage share, in my opinion, as far as APAD is concerned, at least when you think about it um, without getting into the weeds. Um, but it also freed up Yeon on Draven to do some nice things. And they, I mean, the opposition wasn't indexing against him. Now, as far as 100 Thieves is concerned, Closer, you know, found some opportunities, you know, to, to have some impact on this one. Quid actually ended up solo killing Summit at one point in this one. So that was a, a nice thing to see. Double left trying, but unable to really overcome the hole they were in after laning phase. And, um, I mean, 100 Thieves are getting better. Quid is showing glimpses in every game, which I think is important. Um, it's getting, like... Some of these games he has one kill, but it's a solo kill each time. So, um, you know, a young player, hopefully that he continues to take the next step because APA already doing very solid with TL in team fights and finding, you know, Ziggs, I think is one of his better champions. Aureli and Sol and Ziggs, I, if I recall, are his two best champions from years past. Um, so to see this success, not a massive surprise. Immortals Cloud9. Cloud9 win. They're 13th in the power rankings. Now 9 and 3. Immortals 2 and 10. Eminez 627. 36% of damage on Oriana. Blabber 6113 was MVP on Sejuani. Tactical 643. 32% of damage in the loss. Blabber had 100% KP. He was very important to the team's success. One can argue, yeah, but he's on Sejuani. Look what Eminez is doing on Oriana. The game was pretty uh, one-sided before Eminez started really going off. He did get aggressive, flashing him for kills on an Oriana, which is pretty freaking wild. Um, but clearly Blabber had a plan going top lane, getting Fudge ahead of Solo. They did uh, flub one dive where Solo was able to trade, but otherwise Blabber did very well. His ultis were on point when he utilized them throughout the game. And I mean, six kills on a Sejuani, you don't want that, but at the same time, when he's this active, he's feeling himself, that happens. Concern, Cloud9's bot lane was utterly useless. Um, under 20% KP, I mean, sorry, 20% damage share. Very bad performance out of Berserker's Ven. This follows a rough weekend in general for the duo. Um, I am a bit concerned by that. I don't know what the deal is and why that happened, but they have been pretty bad lately. And... Um, Against Immortals, which is tactical and treats, you'd like, you know, them to perform where tactical and treats got the better of them, to be quite honest with you. So, that's a concern. That's a concern. Lastly, Golden Guardians TSM. TSM win, they're 6-6. Six and six. Golden Guardians 23rd in the power rankings, 8-4. Insanity was MVP, 6-2-1, 29% damage on Tristana, I believe. Chime, 0-0-6. Licorice, 1, 2, 5, 36% of damage on Kaysante in the loss. Who he played Zach support in this one. Uh, he did have one roam top lane. Otherwise, um, the Zach I felt, struggled a bit. Uh, difference maker, though, was Insanity. In mid lane, he got ahead of Gory. And then he went bot lane and actually roamed a bit, made things happen, which was a big deal alongside Boogie. And, I mean, that got, I mean, Insanity got a couple kills. He got a little bit of gold. And he became the AD carry, frankly, um, over Wild Turtle in this one. And, I mean, Insanity is an improvement over Ruby. We're seeing a little bit more out of him as these games go by. Is he a great laner? But at the same time, he is, you know, he, his game sense is good if he's getting around the rift and finding opportunities um, to, to, to affect the game outside of trying to get ahead in lane. Um Licorice, so decent game. It is what it is. You know, when River isn't doing well and when Gory aren't doing well, Golden Guardians are going to fall off the face of the earth. Recap, LPL, BLG, Ninja, and Pajamas. BLG win. They are second, uh, yeah, second in the power rank. He's now 13-1, 2-0 victory. Nip, 6-7. Bin was MVP, 13-3, 29% of damage. Played Renekton and Gwen. Elk, 15-4, 17 at 80 carry, Photic 8, 9, and 11, 29% of damage in the loss. Um, I had a tough time picking MVP for this one. I thought Elk in game one was all over the damn place, was very effective, uh, as Bin, not so much. And then in the mid to late game, Bin found opportunities, Yagao found moments as well. But in game two, I felt like it took a while to get Bin involved on the Gwen, but then once they did, he was involved in everything. Um, 
So it's really tough. Like, I think you could go either way. You know, NIP aren't great, uh, but they're they're average, right? So BLG showing a, a um, you know. Actually, I think if I recall, NIP were really competitive in game two. Um, I think they were ahead for quite a while, to be honest with you. And then Bin gets involved and he makes a difference. See, a lot of games I watched put it together. That's why Ben was MVP. He joined fights and that swayed game two. Team Wee RNG. Team Wee, uh, sorry. So yeah, We and RNG. RNG win two to one. They're seven and six as our Team Wee. Um, Breathe was MVP. LP, 12, 12, 18, 27% of damage in the win. Way, 11, 8, 21 in the jungle. Hope, May have played the best out of anybody, going 19-5 and 24, 32% of damage in the loss. So game one was the Hope and Cube show. They were all over the place. Cube, I think, had even a triple on Renekton. and it was very one-sided um, from that aspect. Uh, as far as the game as a whole, RNG did keep pace a bit, but Hope was on another level. Solo killing LP under turret, Lamau playing a bit sus. That was worked out in game two. I thought Lamau was much better. Um, and I thought that Breathe was very, very important to the team's success on Fiora. Pretty much backdoored in the face of Cube and, and was able to take the Nexus. Uh, multiple solo kills in this series against Cube. Now, game one was rough, but I thought that everybody on RNG had a rough game one, in my, in my honest opinion. Um, Wei found good moments on the Vi uh, in this series. I did kind of consider way but then in game three breathe returned and, and did very well into uh cube once more so it ended up going to breathe in the end for mvp status but when your 80 carry goes 12 12 18 you know the bot lane struggled um so this was a really a case that rng had a better top side between top jungle and they carried instead of the bot lane um thunder talk omg thunder talk win 2-0 so omg was back to back uh, they're five and nine now. OMG eight and five. UCAL 12 to 14, 32 percent of damage. Beshwan 8 to 17 was MVP. Cream 577, 35 percent of damage in the loss. So game two, Beshwan a little more effective than game one. I thought that he was he was a difference maker in game two in the KDA department. Then you look at game one and he facilitated very well. So with that in mind, I thought that he he had the most impact. Um, Shanji, once again, not really showing up for OMG. Cream struggling. The bot lane of OMG not doing great. I thought Yao Yao and 1XN got the better of them in the early game at times. Um, I think even getting 2v2 killed. Uh, you know, just not great for OMG. I mean, maybe they took Thunder Talk for granted. It prepared for top esports because they were back-to-back -back against them. And uh, top esports did win. So now they're like, oh, crap. Now we have to play Thunder Talk. We didn't really prepare all that much. And... Um, didn't really have an answer. So, um, you know, not great. UCAL has put together quite a few good series in a row, though. We have to give him his credit. Uh, this this probably last month or so, he has been Thunder Talk's best player. Um, you know, now that Zhao Haogren's out in the jungle, Beshwan took his spot back. It seems 1XN and Yao Yao are going to be the guys in bot lane. What happens to Wan Feng remains a mystery. But, um, you know... Thunder Talk find a way. LCK, T1, Gen G. Gen G win 2 0. This was not a shock to me. They're 10 0. T1 now 6 4. Chovy, 2 4, 17, 27% of damage. Doran, 9 0, 12 in top lane was MVP. Poby, 2 8, 4, 26% of damage in the loss. So, if Baker was healthy and if Bangy was still the coach, I still would have probably picked Gen G. When Faker was out of the lineup, I definitely was going to pick Gen G. When T1 changed coaches the day before playing against Gen G, I figured Gen G would blow them out. And they did in game one. Game two, very close in the early game. This is, It was not a blowout in game two. But game one, very one-sided. Pays was on a mission on Kesa. He was nasty. However, in game two, the only player that showed up was Doran. And he won V9 game two. So that's why I got MVP. His Jax was all that Genji really had when the game was um, still close. And then as they took the lead. 
Uh, Pay's not necessarily inting as bad as his counterparts. Chovy was pretty bad in game two, um, in the early game. But, you know, Zeus is not match. Ze the Tom has to has to work some magic here with the um, mental of how this team has to play. Zeus needs to step up. This is the, you know, people argued with me about Ben versus Zeus last year and before the split. This is how Zeus proves that he's the best top laner in the world. The, if if he can't perform now, and show up. I don't know how somebody can tell me he's the best top laner in the world. He, is, he This is his time to shoot. He needs to carry. Guma ain't doing it. Carrier ain't doing it. No Owner isn't doing it. Best player in the world in their role finds a way to at least make it competitive. In their own lane, for crying out loud. Like, I'm not even asking him to 1v9 a series. How about win the lane? And that, that shit ain't happening. So... T1, it's falling off the rails here. Now, like I said, I expected them to lose a Gen G, but it, it wasn't a great look, and they, there are issues here. There are big issues. Nongshim lives sandbox. Nongshim win 2 0, as now both teams are 2 8. Fiesta was MVP, 8 5 22, 31% of damage. Sylvie, 4 1 19 in the jungle. Teddy, 6 7 5, 32% of damage in the loss. Nongshim, uh, one sided in game one. Sylvie setting the pace. Fiesta being decent. Jiwoo doing well in team fights. Um, Din Din, very good in top lane. Tomorrow, expect news about Live Sandbox. Leaguepedia did not have that. They called up clear. Um, I only noticed it actually midway through watching the uh, series back. I was like, oh, that's because I don't watch draft. You know, in the VOD, I skip, you know, to save some time. And so I see clear up there. I'm like, what? They didn't mention. So I looked up clear on Leakpedia and he's still under uh, Live Sandbox Youth, which is where he was since he got cut by DRX earlier this year. So for him to play over Bird All was a surprise. And I expect tomorrow maybe to make a little blurb about it in the top of the board. I wasn't going to redo the board for, for just that. Um, and he struggled into Din Din in game one. Din Din was a difference maker big time. Now game two. A lot closer. Din Din on Poppy. Um, Live Sandbox actually getting out to a very big lead. Teddy, very aggressive. Closer, finding opportunities. Willer, doing well. Um, but in the mid game, Nong Shim were able to find a way. Got a kill here, a kill there. And then after like 30 minutes, the fights around Drake started going Nong Shim's way to get to Soul Point and then take Soul. And once they had Soul, it was pretty much a wrap. Nong Shim taking this one and. Um, Fiesta being the reason why. He didn't really int too much in the early game of game two to lose them the the, the situation, well, lose them the game state, if you will. Um, and then he was effective in bringing them back, as was Sylvie. The mid-jungle duo doing very well. Now that Nongshim have their starting five from the CK team from 2022 that won, um, they are playing slightly better, but we have to keep in mind it was against Liv Sandbox. It was not against Gen G. Sneak peek for tomorrow, LPL, Weibo, Anyone's Legend. Weibo are 8th in the power ranking, 7-5, and five, coming off of a win against Ultra Prime. Anyone's Legend, 4-9, coming off of a loss to LNG. Last time they played, Weibo 1-2-0. The Shy, 5-4-9, 32% of damage. ZDZ, 5-5-4, 21% of damage in the loss. After that, we have FPX, EDG, FPX 4-9, coming off of a loss to JDG. EDG are 12th at 7 and 6, coming off of a win against LGD. Um, shoot, just one second. Okay. FPX 2 1 was the winner last time. So FPX did upset them, so it's possible. Um, Care went 19 5, 22, 33% of damage in the win. Fofo 10 8, 13, 28% of damage in the loss. The only difference now is that Uzi is in for leave. Lastly, JDG IG. JDG first in the power ranking is 11 and 1, coming off of that win against FPX. IG 3 and 10, coming off of a loss to Thunder Talk. When they played in spring, JDG won 2 0. 369, Ruler and Missing combined for 23 kills, 7 deaths, 59 assists, 1,888 DPM, 51% of the damage. So if Kanavi and Knight had 49% of the damage by themselves. YSKM on and Wink went 8, 33, and 19 for 1,325 DPM, so 550 less, 62% of the damage. So 
a lot more of the damage share and 500 dpm less we could definitely see that the mid jungle duo was the difference in this one lck we got kt and bro kt and bro just played yesterday um i believe it was yesterday i don't know how league uh how uh you know korea decided to do this um but but they did so kt are fourth at eight and one coming off of a win against bro bro two and uh seven coming off of a loss to kt when kt won 2-0 BDD went 7, 4, and 11, 29% of damage in the win. Karas 2, 5, 4, 35% damage in the loss. So um, both teams got to prepare for each other all week long. Lastly, KDF and HLE, the best matchup of the day. Both teams in my top 25. KDF 22nd at 4 and 5, HLE 14th at 5 and 4. The Freaks lost to D+, HLE beat Nongshim earlier in the week. HLE won 2-0 earlier in the split. Viper went 13-3 and 2, 37% of damage in that win. Taeyun 7-3-5, 28% of damage in the loss. So, like I said, the schedule isn't great tomorrow. Um, as we wind down here in the second half of the split, these teams are obviously starting, we're starting to figure out who the uh, contenders are and the pretenders are for um, playoffs and possible Worlds bids. So, that's it for the roundup. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And I hope to see you again tomorrow.